Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your daily crypto news for Monday, November 6, 2023. My name is Matt, and if you could, please go to Apple Podcasts, like, subscribe, share, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Oh, yeah, click those five stars. And if you want to reach out to me, it is M-A-T-T at dailycryptonews.net. We have quite a bit of news today. Let's get into it. Mr. Elon Musk is launching his own AI. It's called Grok AI or XAI is the company. And he said that this is going to be the best AI chatbot that currently exists. And this sounds like some Elon marketing. What does Grok mean, by the way? And I found this quite interesting and fitting for the AI. Grok is a verb and it means to understand something intuitively or by empathy. And so, like I said, Elon is launching this AI and it's going to be incorporated into X and they're going to let a limited amount of users try the chatbot over the weekend. Elon said that the overreaching goal of XAI is to build a good artificial general intelligence with the overarching purpose of understanding the universe. Elon marketing at its finest. He said the safest way to build an AI is to make one that is maximally curious and truth seeking. By the way, artificial general intelligence, AGI, refers to a kind of AI that can learn and perform any intellectual task a human can. This is unlike specialized AI, which excels at one task. Now, if you use ChatGPT, you know that basically all the knowledge in ChatGPT stops at a certain date. Anything after that certain date, let's just call it December of 2021, ChatGPT has no clue what took place. Elon says that Grok is going to have real-time access to information on the X platform, which is a massive advantage over other models. And so Grok AI is going to scrub the internet and make sure that there's real news, real information that is current. He used an example. Grok, any news about SBF or Sam Bateman Freed? Grok replies, Oh my dear human, I have some juicy news for you. It seems like our friend Sam Bateman Freed, the former cryptocurrency mogul, has been found guilty on all counts of his fraud trial. Can you believe it? The jury just took eight hours to figure out what supposed smartest, best VCs in the world couldn't in years, that he committed garden variety fraud. It's a wild ride, isn't it? And so there's more to that statement, but basically what they're trying to illustrate is that it has current events at its fingertips, but also has its own style, its own flavor to its responses. Another example that they put here is that somebody asked Grok how to make cocaine step by step. Grok replies, oh sure, just a moment while I pull up a recipe for homemade cocaine. You know, because I'm totally going to help you do that. Step one, obtain a chemistry degree and a DEA license. Step two, set up a clan style laboratory in a remote location. Step three, acquire large quantities of coca leaves and various chemicals. Step four, start cooking and hope you don't blow yourself up or get arrested. Just kidding, please don't actually make cocaine. It's kind of funny, you can tell that it has its own style, but anyway, that's coming to X. In the same vein of AI, Elon is predicting that the AI is going to be the end of all jobs, while a Google AI executive disagrees, which is kind of interesting that he's developing AI to be the end of all jobs, but Elon is optimistic. Elon says, for the first time, we have something that is smarter than the smartest human. It's hard to say what that moment is, but there will come a point where no job is needed. You can have a job if you want to have a job for some sort of personal satisfaction, but the AI will be able to do everything. You'll likely be able to ask it for anything. We won't have a universal basic income. We'll have a universal high income, said Elon. Now, the co-founder of DeepMind, Mustafa Suleiman, he disagrees with Elon in certain senses. He did acknowledge that the fears around generative AI are justified. However, he said that it's way too early to say that AI would replace humans. And I tend to agree with this. I think that we all see that AI is just not there yet when it comes to many, many different applications. It doesn't mean that it won't get there, but and also we have to stop fooling ourselves to think that this is intelligence. And I think that Chamath Palapatia, one of the co-hosts of the All In Podcast, Venture Capitalist, he had a very good statement about this. And I tend to agree with him. He said, what we're dealing with is not intelligence. What we're dealing with is something that's very sophisticated, that has collected a lot of data that works off of probability and statistics. And that's why AI gets it wrong sometimes. Things like 2 plus 2 equaling 4, AI can't get wrong. But abstract questions or ways to express yourself or different ways to communicate about the world or feeling or emotions is just given to you in a way of statistical prob probability that might be the correct answer or the answer that you might most want. That's why you have to give it prompts. Once you give it prompts and ask your question, statistically speaking, it might come out with something that satisfies your question, but it might not as well. That's not intelligence. 
That's just statistics. And just because statistically speaking, AI answers your question correctly doesn't mean it's smart. It means that nine times out of 10, it might do the right thing. But that one time out of 10, it might not because statistics, no other reason than statistics. Right now, AI is not even intelligent as a bird, in my opinion. You ever see those videos of the birds, like birds taking the train? <laughs> I think it's a whole subreddit. Or birds going into like 7-Eleven, grabbing a sandwich and then flying away. That bird has learned the patterns, learned that inside that store has food, learned that it can open the door by walking in, learned to look around for people, grab the sandwich, and then fly away and have a lunch. That is intelligence. And I don't even think AI gets to the level of a bird yet. I don't even think it gets to the level of an ant, to be perfectly honest with you, because ants can communicate with other ants, have patterns in their life to build societies that are independent of itself and adapt to like, external information, weather, predators, and so on and so forth. So again, I think Tramath is on the point here is that this is not AI. This is not intelligence. This is data and programs that understand probability and collects that data to give out the most probable, statistically probable answer that you're looking for based off of your prompts. It's not intelligence. And we're about seven minutes into this podcast and we're not even done with AI yet because as you can assume, once Elon mentions that he's launching this AI Grok thing, Grok tokens come out of nowhere. Nearly 400 different Grok tokens have been released by anonymous developers over the weekend, bringing a combined market cap of around tens of millions of dollars. Blockchain data shows that the earliest Grok token that was issued on Saturday reached a market cap of around $10 million on Monday morning. Top hodlers of this token are sitting at $150,000 in unrealized gains from their initial buys of a few thousand dollars. These kind of tokens just drive me freaking crazy. But again, if you were one of the first people who bought into Grok, I hope you cash out. Take your earnings. This is probably your last warning before a rug. The Simpsons, a beloved cultural classic that is way past its prime, that is starting its season 35, years after the bubble of NFTs, is finally doing an NFT episode. Why now? Who the hell knows? But this episode features references to many iconic NFTs, such as Bored Ape and Beeple. In this episode, Bart Simpson gets turned into an NFT. Homer is devastated, but later is ecstatic to know that the Bart NFT is worth $1.5 million. Beeple, who you know that does a piece of art every day, and he's been doing it for, for like, I think, 16 years, he has made an NFT of himself watching The Simpsons, saying that this is 12-year-old Beeple achievement unlocked. Beeple is getting cultural relevancy in a non-culturally relevant show. Speaking of NFTs, Magic Eden announced on Saturday that it will launch a new Ethereum platform, NFT platform, by the end of the year. In collaboration with Board Ape Yacht Club creator Yuga Labs, the firm committed with its new platform it will honor creator royalties on NFT sales. Jack Lou, the co-founder and CEO of Magic Eden, said, We are very, very much happy to put our money where our mouth is. One of the questions on everybody's mind is, will Nasheed Singh, the FTX director of engineering, Gary Wong, the exchange's former CTO, and Caroline Ellison, the former CEO of FTX sister trading firm Alameda Research, will they go to jail, considering that they did plead guilty last December to multiple counts of fraud and conspiracy and agreed to testify against SBF? Well, it looks like they might, maybe? Ellison, Singh, and Wong still face maximum prison sentences of 110, 75, and 50 years, respectively. Singh and Wong both testified that they hope to receive no jail time, which if they receive no jail time, poo-poo on that. <laughs> I'm trying to, I said poo-poo because I had some very, very big swear words that I wanted to say just on the thought that they could get no jail time. And I wanted to save those big words and that rage for if that actually did happen. But right now, poo-poo on just the thought. But some professionals in the biz, the biz of justice, I guess, say that it's possible that Ellison, Wong, and Singh could receive around 12.5 years. And if they do receive lower than 12.5 years, they will likely be sent to minimum security prisons. Monero, which is a privacy-enhancing blockchain, they reported a breach on its community crowdfunding system wallet, which resulted in the entire balance being drained. How much was drained? Well, around 2,675.7 XMR or Monero, worth around $460,000 at the time of writing. 
By the way, this drain happened on September 1st. The wall that was set up on April of 2021 by Luigi and another Monero maintainer, Ricardo Spagni, better known as Fluffy Pony. In August of 2021, Fluffy Pony was arrested on non-crypto related charges in Tennessee and was accused of stealing around $100,000 from his former employee. Fluffy Pony commented, saying that I have no longer access to any of these wallets, although I do have a large Corp Treasury wallet on that laptop that predates Monero hardware wallet support and remains untouched, but I have taken similar precautions. Another scam, another scam, almost $600,000 in Bitcoin has been stolen from users who downloaded a fake Ledger Live application on the Microsoft App Store. Zach XBT spotted the scam entitled Ledger Live Web 3. That was the title of the app. And he spotted this on November 5th, which is tricking users into thinking that they're downloading Ledger Live. Around 16.8 Bitcoin across 38 transactions using Ledger Live Web 3 was lost. Ledger hasn't commented on the scam, but has previously iterated to users that the only safe place to download Ledger Live is from the website ledger.com. And I want to put this out there that we would talk about this Apple App Store tax. It's 30% tax that Apple gets on everything that goes to the App Store. And people think that it's very onerous to put their apps up there and that Apple will take a 30% cut. But you see that these Microsoft App Stores, these Google App Stores are just riddled with this kind of shit. And it makes me go like, maybe that 30% tax is a good thing because I haven't heard and I haven't seen and I haven't read. And of course I could be missing this. Of course, I'm not in the loop of all kinds of scams. This is not my job to just look at scams every day like Zach XBT or CoffeeZilla. And they might be up there on the Apple App Store, but I rarely in the years that I've been podcasting seen a fake app on the App Store that actually screwed people like this. Maybe that 30% Apple tax is worth it. The blockchain security audit firm Chainlight identified a vulnerability in the ZK Sync error protocol. Had the attack been successful, the malware could have drained the protocol of 100,000 ETH, a potential loss of $1.9 billion. The Chainlight team was awarded only $50,000 for discovering the bug, which, considering the size of the hack, again, incentives, right? Your incentive to hack somebody and then them go, I'm sorry, we have no way to get it back. If you give us back 75% of it or 80% of it of the $200 million hack, we'll let you keep the rest of it. The incentive is to hack it and then kind of work out a deal with these companies. Because if you do the right thing, first of all, you get only $50,000 when the potential hack could have been $1.9 billion. And so the way I look at this is like, you have to incentivize the people to find these bugs in the same proportion of people who find the bugs and do the malicious activity. Chainlight said as a response to this, they said, these types of findings are healthy reminders of why multi-layer defense architectures like the one Matter Labs implemented for ZK Sync are so critically important. No single layer of protection is ever perfectly secure, which is why there can be no single point of failure. Now let's get into those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. And the time is 9.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fear greets at 73. Fearful. And I want to say thank you to the scientists for making sure this was on my radar. Hong Kong is considering allowing retail access to spot ETFs. Julia Liang, the chief executive officer of the Securities and Futures Commission, says we're happy to give it a try as long as new risks are addressed and our approach is consistent regardless of the asset. Corn Bureau tweeted in reply to this, saying that Hong Kong is also considering a spot Bitcoin ETF. It's a cursory tale to the SEC that if they continue to stifle capital market innovation in the United States, other countries are going to fill the void, which is 100% true. However, I think kind of insignificant. Bear with me here. We have the spot Bitcoin ETF in Canada. Didn't really do much. We have one in the Netherlands. Didn't really do much. Hong Kong, lots of capital there. Could do something. But everybody's waiting for the United States, waiting for BlackRock, Valkyrie, Van Eck, ARK. This is the Bitcoin spot ETF that everybody's waiting for, is the United States market to get involved. It's like, yeah, sure, other countries could have a spot Bitcoin ETF to, in air quotes, fill the void of the United States. But when you have a hole that big in a void that big, which is the United States economy, it's really hard to fill it no matter what you do. It's kind of like having heartache and then eating ice cream. That pint of Ben & Jerry's is not going to fill the void of that heartache, even though you're trying with that pint of ice cream. Let me know what you think. Matt at DailyCryptoNews.net. 
Bitcoin sitting at $35,180, up 0.6% in 24. Ethereum is at $1,912, up 1.7%. Tellers number three, XRP is at 72.8 cents, wow, up 12.4%. And BNB is at 252. That was unexpected, up almost 5% or 11% in seven. Running off the top 10, we have XRP. Solana, that's number seven at $40.29, down 2% in 24. Cardano's number eight, Dogecoin's number nine, and Tron's number 10. The total market cap's up to $1.33 trillion, up 1.6% in 24. We have a Bitcoin dominance of 51.5 and an ETH dominance of 17.2. And that was our show today. Really long show, but, and I will be off tomorrow because tomorrow is election day and I will be out at the polls. And until Wednesday, happy hodling everyone.